Coming up on Ag Week TV, ag exports slowly resume in the Gulf while lawmakers look for a fix to the shipping container shortage. As row crop harvest approaches in the region, yield prospects become clearer. An aftermarket air cedar price company makes its sixth appearance at Big Iron this year. And we'll have highlights from the Minnesota and South Dakota state fairs. Welcome to the 350th episode of Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. The Lower Mississippi River and ports in southeastern Louisiana reopened over the Labor Day weekend as power lines that blocked the river after Hurricane Ida have been removed. Some export facilities are operational and are loading and receiving vessels, but the core export elevator network in New Orleans remains without power. Full capacity may not be restored for two to three weeks, which is a concern as the harvest moves north. I hope we don't get backed up because we've got a, uh, I, th I think probably a short crop coming relative to other states anyway in South Dakota, so we don't need any more problems right now. Nearly two-thirds of agricultural exports move through the port of New Orleans each year. A much longer-term export problem in the U.S. continues to be the shortage of shipping containers. Ocean carriers are refusing to accept bookings for U.S. exports and are quickly sending empty containers back to the Asia-Pacific region to refill with foreign product. This is stopping U.S. ag exports from reaching key markets. It started during the pandemic, but has continued. Lawmakers are pushing for equity, and South Dakota's Dusty Johnson has introduced the Ocean Shipping Reform Act of 2021. It would establish reciprocal trade opportunities to reduce the U.S.'s trade imbalance with China and other countries. It says, gosh darn it guys, you use American ports, you have a common carrier obligation, you are, should not be allowed to unfairly discriminate against American ag products. Johnson says the four main ocean carriers control 80% of the volume. Agricultural interests are telling EPA to leave the Trump era waters of the U.S. rule in place and many have asked for an extension of the public comment period that ended August 31st. Ag Group submitted comments to EPA during a month-long open forum and comment process and ahead of a rewrite of the Navigable Waters Protection Rule. Most are asking for common sense when it comes to the scope of jurisdiction under the Clean Water Act and that includes how navigable waters are determined. That word navigable is so important in how we define it. It needs to stay in there and it needs to be defined uh, properly so that farmers and ranchers know what's waters of the U.S. or not. A federal court in Arizona recently vacated the navigable waters protection rule. USDA is extending more drought assistance to producers. The Farm Service Agency is expanding the emergency assistance for livestock, honeybees, and farm-raised fish program, or ELAP, to cover feed transportation costs. Previously, ELAP covered additional costs for transportation, water for livestock in counties identified as D3 or higher. The final harvest prices for revenue coverage have been set and are higher than 2020. The spring wheat price is $9.21 per bushel, up from $6.53 last year. Barley is at $4.79, up 70 cents, and the North Dakota Durham price is at $9.56, a $3.10 jump. Our Ag Week Corn and Soybean Tour continues this week. Emily Beal checks out the conditions and crop in West Central Minnesota. Thanks, Michelle. Today I'm making a stop on Ag Week's 2021 corn and soybean crop tour. Today I am with Derek Haug. In this area, we've been a little luckier than most. We've had a little bit more rain than, uh, than most fields in this area. But uh, even with that being said, we're still three to five inches behind where we would be averagely. If you had to estimate by looking at this field right now, um, where do you think it's going to land in terms of yield? I would guess it's still going to probably be in the 170 to 180. Um, area, I still think it's going to yield really well. And how is this region, such as Holly, uh, Minnesota, comparing to the other fields that you have seen? It's uh, it's actually better here. Like I said, we've gotten a little bit more rain than uh, most of my territory has. I got areas where there's guys that have gotten you know less than two inches of rain all season. So if I had to guess, I think the corn's still going to be slightly better than average. All right, so we've moved on over to a soybean field, and do you kind of want to tell me a little bit about what we're seeing over here? This area did get a little bit more rain than most, but it still has uh, impacted the soybeans. It's you know they're a little bit shorter than they usually are, and um, they're also maturing faster. As you can see behind us, usually it would be another week or two before they'd start really dropping leaves. In terms of yield, what do you think that this field will end up putting out for you guys? 
this would probably end up to be about 30 to 35. I think it's going to be slightly below average just because uh, it seems like the soybeans in some areas took it a little bit harder with the lack of moisture and the heat. Thanks, Derek. On Ag Week's 2021 Corn and Soybean Crop Tour, this is Emily Beal in Holly, Minnesota. Coming up on Ag Week TV, a North Dakota Ag Parts Company wins a big award. Thank you to our 2021 sponsors, Calcine, Aqua Yield, Corteva AgriScience, KNT Irrigation, and Ag Country Farm Credit Services. Superior Grain Equipment offers you the industry's best dryer and grain handling equipment. So make the superior choice and get higher quality grains, test weights, and prices while using half the energy. Superior Grain Equipment. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. Every dollar counts on the farm, especially in this year's dry conditions. There's a new technology that uses nanoparticles for more efficient delivery of nutrients to your crops. Rose Dunn gives you a look at how nanoliquid technology works. AquaYield was first introduced to this region in 2018 by Ericsson Custom Operations. Aside from the excitement of offering a new technology that works, growers across the Midwest are achieving higher yields and a better crop while reducing input costs through nanoliquid technology. No, no special handling, easy to use, four ounces per acre. So really low use rate. You can put it in furrow, you can foliar apply it. And I mean really all from between $3 to possibly $8 on a per acre cost to you to, to try it. So very inexpensive. To learn more about how Aqua Yield works, contact Jim Erickson at ECO at the number or email on your screen. Superior Grain Equipment is committed to quality and service. Protect your bottom line and your future with superior quality, protection, and reliability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Shatter loss. It's been plaguing producers ever since the corn header was invented. Leading Edge Industries has the solution with Operation Harvest Weave. Proven to reduce shatter loss up to 85% without pulling in excessive trash. The kits simply replace the deck plates and gathering chains on your corn header. Operation Harvest Weave's patented design saves multiple bushels per acre, increasing feeding performance and drastically decreasing volunteer corn. Order Operation Harvest Weave today at harvestweave.com. A Fargo Ag Parts engineering company has received a big honor. Ready has been named to the Inc. 5000 list. It's based on percentage of business growth. In this week's Ag Week cover story, Michael Pates talks to the twin brothers who run Red E. Red E has grown a lot in the last nine years, and it's winning national awards. We made number 923 on the entire list of 5,000, so below 1,000. We're pretty stoked about that. But then we also made number two in the state of North Dakota. We also were number 11 nationwide of engineering companies applying. Matthew Fall started Red E in December of 2012 and his twin brother Jesse joined the company in 2015. Between 2018 and 2020, they saw a growth of 524%. That growth is what landed them on the Inc. 5000 list. The company specializes in replacement parts and technology upgrades for air seeders. Ready's reach has really expanded into almost the entire United States and Canada. We've also gotten into Australia, New Zealand, a lot into Russia, Ukraine, every week or every month. It's, it seems like there's some new country or, or area that, that uh, is coming to us for a solution. In the last five years, Ready has grown from five employees, including Jesse and Matthew. Today, it's about 30 full and part-time employees. Jesse Fall gives credit to their customers. There's a lot of things that we don't know ourselves, but when we work with uh, great customers and have a great team, it's amazing the collaboration and solutions that we can come up with. So if you're looking for the latest in air seeder parts, or a lot of things, join us at Big Iron. For Ag Week, this is Michael Pates in Fargo, North Dakota. You can read more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. 
Peterson Farm Seeds welcomed growers to their Cass County, North Dakota farm recently for their annual field day. Farmers heard about the current drought situation, markets, precision ag, and more. Carl Peterson says the ultimate goal is raising yields. And sometimes that's a, a new corn hybrid or soybean variety, but sometimes it might just be uh, planter settings or, you know, some of the other uh, things that we've got going here. So the focus of this day is that every farmer who comes will learn something that will help them raise the yields on their farm next year. Commodity broker Tommy Grisafi talked about how to make the most of the current grain markets. These opportunities don't come around often. Uh, we're going to be plagued with inflation and uh, although they see prices higher, I'm not so sure that uh, when they add up all the things it's going to take to grow a crop that they'll be as profitable as they think in years to come. Peterson Farms has been hosting the field day since 2005. Drain tiling is becoming more and more popular, and now an Oaks, North Dakota company has designed a system to use drain tile water for irrigation. Rose Dunn talked to Ryan Rosendahl of General Irrigation about how it works. This was, again, essentially an experiment, but we've proven that it works. The Rosendahl family has been in the irrigation and water pumping business for decades. Their companies, General Irrigation and Dynaflow Pumps, help farmers manage field water. But now they've come up with a way to run a center pivot irrigation system with drain tile pumps. Our Dynaflow Pumps are typically used in taking water off of the field for drain tile purposes. So the synergy is we have an irrigation company and we have a pump company for drain tile. And we putting them together, we can essentially kill two birds with one stone. So essentially, this system recycles water from the drain tile system and puts it to use on crops through the irrigator, rather than pumping it away from fields. Usually, center pivots get water from vertical wells or from rivers, and typically drain tile takes the water and dumps it into a drainage ditch and gets it off of the field as soon as possible. When the grower is irrigating, this valve is closed. Now when he decides to go into drainage mode and drain it like a regular drain tile system, all he has to do is open this valve. And this will take the water up and over the hill and operate both lift stations like a regular drainage system would. With a field net system, drainage and irrigation can be run and monitored on your phone or computer. So we can get up to the second flow and total volume used. Secondarily, with the field net system, we have a program called Field Net Advisor, which shows the projected growth of the crop and how much water it needs to be put on. The system can be installed in less than a day and it can be retrofitted onto existing drain tile systems. We believe the return on investment for this project is quite high because you're draining the water when the fields are wet, you're putting the water on when the fields are dry. In Oaks, North Dakota, this is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. For more information on this product, go to dynaflowpump.com. Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll meet some recent North Dakota transplants who have found a big opportunity in their new small community. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality galvanized steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. I'm Peter Bosch. I've been working with Gateway Building Systems for a little over 20 years now. I chose Gateway Building Systems to build my shop because I wanted a building that could both be used for my equipment and as a place for my family to hang out and do things. I would advise anybody that's thinking about working with Gateway to go in and talk to the guys there. Tell them your plans and your future dreams and let them design something for you. I know you didn't ask me to, but I grabbed your mail for you while you were out of town. Uh, this one was marked urgent, so I opened it for you. 
It's your bank statement. Are all those charges right? I highlighted the bottom of page three where you can sign up for e-statements. This isn't my mail. <laughs> e-statements with Cornerstone Bank. Keep nosy neighbors at bay by switching today. At North Star Ag, we're more than your short line machinery dealer. We're also full service and we're farmers first. That means we know it's not about what's best, but what's best for your farm. Whether you're planting, growing, or harvesting, we're there for all your equipment, parts, and service needs. And we've been doing it since 2009, with the largest inventory and availability in the area. Check us out at northstar-ag.com or call us at 701-361-4790. The weather has been fairly cooperative for early harvest activities in the region. Will that continue? Here's our AgriWeather Outlook. What's been in recent news lately is the new Farmers and Old Farmers Almanac that have been released for this upcoming uh, winter season. And again, these usually are just a flip of the coin here. You can see it down there, season of shivers. We'll see if that pans out. Uh, right now, it has much of the northern plains here kind of on that cold and drier stretch. A little bit snowier on the western side of the Dakotas. But again, if our recent drought is anything, uh, it's likely to, uh, again, remain on the drier side here as we go throughout the uh, rest of this uh, fall month. So we'll see how these uh, winter forecast to pan out and the new farmer's almanac here sitting at numbs the word here for the northern plains of for the upcoming winter season of 2021 at 2022 and there is at least a sign here of some uh, la nina some colder ocean waters to develop down across the uh, pacific ocean here uh, the national weather service here predicting of around a 70 percent chance of la nina uh, conditions developing this fall and this for the northern plains it really all has to do with how much snow that we have currently on the ground if we have a more of a drier summer it's going to be hard to get those temperatures uh, down down uh, quite uh, chilly for uh, multiple uh, weeks on end. But if we have a decent snowpack, uh, certainly we could be in for a colder uh, parts uh, to this upcoming winter season. Precipitation as we go throughout the first uh, week of August uh, through this first week here of September. Again, we finally did start to inch our way at least briefly out of our current drought situation with most areas picking up around two to five inches uh, of precipitation. We will likely see a significant uh, decrease into some of these more exceptional uh, drought areas. But nonetheless, again, uh, still dealing with some of that extreme drought conditions on the southwestern side of Devil's Lake and uh, just to the east of Minot, as well as some portions here of northwestern Minnesota. Uh, we'll likely see some of that uh, changing here as we go throughout this next week. Been completely dry out across the western U.S. compared to the eastern parts of the U.S. and the deep south, again, where the, the soil is uh, very saturated along the east coast. Going forward into this week, the only decent chance of rain heading our direction on Monday. Overall, though, uh, most of us here are going to have more of a dry our week ahead as we go throughout September 12th uh, right on into the 18th. And as we take a look at our temperature trend here, again, we are going to expect a cooler weekend and then our jet stream is going to come right back along uh, across parts of the northern Dakotas and uh, parts of uh, the northern tier of Minnesota. And that's going to bring a chance for some precipitation to ride right along this jet stream here. And we'll see a few drops of precipitation trying to reach the ground across parts of the Dakotas again and parts of uh, northern Minnesota. And then we briefly get this jet stream going back north. We'll start to warm temperatures up briefly back up into the upper 70s before we might have to watch out for another cool down slightly as we head towards this upcoming weekend with highs dipping back down into those upper 60s to lower 70s. Again, recapping this, our best rain chance heading our direction Monday, September 13th. And as we go throughout mid-September, again, likely staying on the uh, mostly drier side. And then late September, we have to watch out for some signals of maybe a first frost of the season. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. Join us Friday, September 24th for a free one-day egg safety training program happening at the North Dakota Safety Council campus in Bismarck. The course, ideal for anyone in egg or related fields, will teach you best practices for working with chemicals, egg equipment, grain handling, storage, and livestock. Space is limited. Register today at ndsc.org slash egg safety. 
trance systems every day is a great day to haul beats. Our family-owned business moves more beats than anyone in the world. We enjoy good work and good pay, and many of us have been here for decades because it's a place where our opinions are heard and our accomplishments are seen. We're your home every day and can take summers off. Here, our safety and yours matter most. Trans Systems, a sweet haul in the Red River Valley since 1983. They say when the going gets tough, the tough get going. At OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running. No matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. North Dakota's rural communities offer lots of opportunities and they're attracting more people to North Dakota. We're partnering with the nonprofit Strengthen ND for this sponsored content series. Rose Dunn talks to an Idaho family about why they're putting down roots in rural North Dakota. We felt more at home when we came to visit Ashley than when we went back home to Idaho. I think we need the Trulies. Over the years, Shane and Carly Peacock made several trips to Ashley for their home in Boise, Idaho to visit family. They both worked full time for the National Guard there, but were thinking about making a change. So the first year we just joked like, ah, it'd be funny if we moved there one day. And then I think it was the fourth year we came to visit. I looked at Shane and I was like, I think we should actually move there. Shane's sister had married an Ashley native. Then his mom joined them. And each time the Peacocks came to visit, they gave more thought to moving here. Two years ago, they did. This small community gave them a big opportunity to own their own business. They opened a liquor store in September of 2020. We always wanted to have a business, but you know, in a big city, the cost of your real estate is so high. The cost of licensing, like something like this, a liquor license is so high. It puts so many things out of reach. Moving somewhere like this, you don't realize that you know, you can, you can buy a piece of land and some real estate at a price that you can afford and you can actually thrive if you can just find your little niche, your little thing that you can do well, that you can provide to the community, the opportunity is huge. Did we get that October first? And they still serve in the Guard, transferring to the North Dakota Air Guard in Fargo. About 750 people live in Ashley, and they're happy to be raising their son in a small town with good schools. That's one of the best things. I mean, him being able to say, hey, can I go to the park? Yeah, go ride your bike to the park and play, and you don't worry, you know? or. During the summer, the pool is open. You can go spend hours at the pool. That sense of safety and community that you get in a small town is just, that makes up for some of the you know potential drawbacks. Tara Bradner is a nurse practitioner who returned to her hometown of Ashley nine years ago to raise her family. She says the Peacocks already have deep roots in the community. You wouldn't even know that they weren't from here. They've, they're active in many community organizations. They're very big on promoting Ashley. They're very active volunteers in the community in various different ways. We're glad we moved and it just reassured that we did the right thing and that this is where, where we want to be. In Ashley, North Dakota, this is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. To learn how Strength in ND helps build big opportunities in small communities, visit strengthenND.com. When Ag Week TV returns, we'll take a look at how history is still a part of the Minnesota State Fair. Shatter loss. It's been plaguing producers ever since the corn header was invented. Leading Edge Industries has the solution with Operation Harvest Week. Proven to reduce shatter loss up to 85% without pulling in excessive trash. The kits simply replace the deck plates and gathering chains on your corn header. Operation Harvest Sweep's patented design saves multiple bushels per acre, increasing feeding performance, and drastically decreasing volunteer corn. Order Operation Harvest Sweep today at harvestsweep.com. Challenges. We all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, 
Maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. Saline can leave a field unproductive, so agronomist Greg Johnson was excited when he found out about a product called calcene. Well, basically, calcene, they spray it over the top. Uh, there needs to be calcium carbonate in the soil to, to start a reaction. That reaction, in a nutshell, is basically able to dislodge the sodium ion from the soil particle and allow the calcium to uh, take its place on the soil part particle. And then we're able to flush those, those, the sodium out of the soil profile and down. And at some point, we will start seeing things like this, where this was black, and now, we're, now we've got corn growing, and that's an awesome story. Farmer Neil Johnson couldn't agree more. It is worth the investment. I mean, we've got growth, we've got things that are happening. Because if we didn't do anything, we'd have nothing. We'd be losing more, and it'd probably be leaching out further. Between the drain tile and calcine, you see now that we have vegetation. Contact Jim Erickson or visit calcine.us. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. The South Dakota State Fair wrapped up on Labor Day and it was a celebration of agriculture and youth. South Dakota is one of the most agricultural fairs in the nation and it's a great outreach to consumers. The State Fair represents South Dakota, represents their agriculture. People from all walks of life can come see agriculture in a different perspective. Ground was broke for the new Dakota Events Complex to replace the destroyed beef barn. I think it's important to agriculture in South Dakota in general and we just wanted to be a part of it. It's going to be a huge shot in the arm for the for the South Dakota State Fair. The Ag Department and Farm Bureau also celebrated South Dakota Century Farms. Where we uh, recognize farms and ranchers that have been in the same family for 100 years or 125 or 150. And the fair showcased FFA and 4-H use. I'm the vice president of my club and we get to learn many, we have many opportunities through 4-H to learn and grow. The Minnesota State Fair wasn't able to mark its centennial last year because of COVID, so they celebrated this year. The cattle barn at the Minnesota State Fair is 101 years old. It was designed by famed architect Clarence H. Johnston, who also designed several buildings at the University of Minnesota. Some of the grand homes on Summit Avenue in St. Paul and the Glensheen Mansion in Duluth. So he kind of has his stamp on a lot of things and we're lucky to have at least one of his buildings here on the fairgrounds. Sections of the barn had to be rebuilt after part of the roof collapsed under heavy snow in 2019. The building also got some upgrades at that time. It houses about a thousand head of cattle daily during the 12 day run of the fair. Thanks for watching our 350th edition of Ag Week TV. Remember for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram as well. Have yourself a great and safe week.